What is up, everybody, and welcome to Master Study. Uh, just a quick little notice, quick little, uh, I guess, before you watch disclaimer thing. This was recorded a couple months ago, so I, I don't really say anything that's too dated, but I do just want to be very clear that this started production a long time ago before I picked it back up, and uh, Stephen and I kind of made it what it is now. Um, with that being said, though, the way this is going to play out is you're going to just watch me suffer for three days and try to make this thing a reality. I do hope you enjoy. And if you guys want to see more master study, please let us know in the comments. Um, you could even give us some artist ideas. We do have a couple of them picked out, but just in case. Yeah, you can leave that in the comment section below. So again, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Achieving a unique style is something all artists have wished for at some point, and many have even succeeded at creating a brand new and recognizable way of creating art. We as artists are so often driven for creating a unique look or sound or feeling that we often lose sight on how styles are actually formed. Do people just make them up out of thin air? Well. No, that's pretty silly. Do they need to study for years to master a look that's never been seen before? Well, that's a little closer to the truth, but still not quite. And more importantly, can everyone have their own style? If you're an artist, I'm sure finding your own art style is something that you've at least struggled with a little bit. I know personally in my experience, style has been a huge driving factor in my passion for art. Not because I want to find my own voice per se, but mainly I love seeing what other people bring to the table. This series is going to be like something I have never done before. I'm going to dive into some of my favorite artist styles and attempt to not only recreate them to the best of my abilities, but maybe even deconstruct why the art looks the way it does. In the end, I might even learn a thing or two. Well, hopefully at least. Learning new styles, paying homage to the greats, and having tons of fun. This is Master Study. Let's create something great. Pokemon isn't something that needs an introduction, but for those of you in the back, Pokemon is a multimedia franchise that's existed since 1996, and since then it has grown into an absolute media icon. We're talking video games, shows, card games, apps, birthday decorations, even a live action movie with Ryan Reynolds playing the yellow rat. You can see Pokemon almost everywhere you go. Now while its success can be attributed to the fact that the games were fantastic and really brought the JRPG genre to the forefront in the West in a pretty big way, I think the unsung hero of the series has always been its art direction. With that, let's talk about the man who essentially made the Pokemon style what it is, and my absolute favorite artist of all time, Ken Sugimori. Now, quick disclaimer, while the Pokemon art is usually mainly attributed to Ken Sugimori, he's by far not the only person working on this game. He is not the only one who has designed our favorites. From Takeo Uno, Atsuko Nishida, who designed Pikachu's famous look, to even slightly newer team member and art director for Sword and Shield, James Turner. A lot less Japanese, but just as wildly talented. Also, I highly recommend you guys check these artists out on your own time. They all do fantastic work. So again, Pokemon is far from a one-man team. Although Ken Sugimori is the backbone of what the style has become, it was built upon many artists' identities. Although we are focusing on the person who primarily made it big, which again is Ken Sugimori. With that being said, we are going to dissect two styles popularized by Sugimori himself. Yep, starting the first episode with twice the workload. First off, there's the OG style, hand-drawn, watercolored, very 90s sharp anime look, iconic, and the anime really ran with this style and evolved it in its own way, until Sun and Moon when it adopted a lot of Sugimori's newer styles but I digress. Secondly, we have his new style. So this is seen in the more recent games. It's a lot more sleek, still having somewhat of a painterly way of rendering, but all in all, a huge divergence in visual looks from his older stuff. This style is probably my biggest inspiration to date. And I don't just mean in anime or in Pokemon for that matter. I mean, in all of media. Now, if we look at all the games from Green to Sword and Shield, we can see the natural evolution through his art. The question, however, is how and why did this change happen? More importantly, can we replicate it? I've given myself three days to study as much as possible, and on the third day, I will put everything I've learned 
to the test, and hopefully we come at least a little close to what Ken Sugimori's stuff looks like. So with the start of the first day, I wanted to right off the bat draw in both styles at my current understanding of how Ken Sugimori draws his characters. No research, no studying. After pulling up some reference pictures, I jumped right in, starting with the older style. And oh boy was it rough. I decided to turn the newest player character from Sword and Shield into a Gen 1 trainer. Cute idea, kind of poor execution. While the line art I was building up wasn't exactly the worst, there was a bit of an uncanny look to my version. This was further amplified when I got to the rendering step of the piece. Trying to mimic watercolor was tough and I struggled figuring out what brushes to utilize to maintain that hand-drawn look. In the end, this is what I settled for. Again, it's really not bad, but compared to Sugimori's work, we can really see some glaring issues. But again, this is essentially just the control piece, to see where I'm at currently. So it's not like this is very telling of anything. Or is it? Let's move on to the newer style. Starting with the sketch for this one, I was a lot more confident. I've practiced this style in the past and even have a somewhat similar look to my own art. While in the moment I felt extremely confident, it did begin to waver the further I got into the piece. And hey, artists and creators, let this be a lesson real quick. Sometimes when taking a sketch to a full illustration, or pretty much any creative idea to its finished product, it loses a lot of the edge and may turn out worse than what you would like or at least what you imagined. Don't get too frustrated. The best thing to do is single out the things you aren't liking and adjusting as you go. I unfortunately did absolutely none of that and ended up with a piece that had multiple identities. The main problem with this one is it looks like a Pokemon drawing, but fused with my own personal style, which could be fine, but that's not exactly what we are aiming for. Remember, I'm not doing fan art, I'm trying to copy the style. Again, it's not a bad piece, but certainly not a Sugimori level drawing. So, where do we go from here? <clears throat> so what's up guys? Um, this is the end of day one. Uh, pretty much today all I did was um, take a look at both styles and just try to redraw it to the best of my ability or remake the art to the best of my ability without really breaking anything down too much. So it's just, it's just kind of the references there um, and then I do the best I can with that. Uh, tomorrow, though, what I'm thinking of doing is really breaking apart the actual style and seeing what I can do, see if I can find anything. Um, anyway, here's to you, future Joseph. Hope you figure something out. The bulk of this day was dedicated to two things mainly. Number one, I needed to assess the previous faults in my two drawings, and number two, find fixes to get them a little closer to the money. Let's see what I did with the OG Sugimori style first. Finding negatives wasn't the hard part. What was hard, however, was finding ways to fix them. Some negatives I picked up on are as follows. First off, my expressions and head proportions were completely off. The brush I was using, while giving a great tactile feel, didn't allow for the line confidence Sugimori style conveys. The biggest one, however, and I cannot stress this enough, was the rendering. Yes, I succeeded again in giving it somewhat the feeling that it was on paper and kind of watercolored, but it just didn't feel right. My big takeaway is that while I got the basics of what I needed, the applications were all off. With this in mind, I began working. This consisted of a lot of micromanaged studies. What brushes I should use? What techniques can I develop to unify the look? Then, of course, is there anything I could do structurally with the pose or general feel that could potentially make it feel more official? My two biggest problems that this day showed me were simple. I needed to make the line art match the style more, and I needed to find a better way to render this picture, which was the bigger of the two problems for sure. Remember, I'm working fully digitally, so to get that brush-like effect, I would need to figure out what brushes I could use to mimic that painterly feel. Now let's take a look at Sugimori's old work and break down some points that could really help us out. First point is his line variations. For the most part, they don't change too drastically, but because this was drawn physically on paper, you can see more human error. What you can also see is the different, more natural weight distribution of the pen. Some parts are thicker than others, but there isn't a rhyme or reason to it. Second is again that tactile feel. This is drawn on paper and should reflect that feeling. 
This can be a huge problem for me because my art is super clean and I utilize the digital tools at my disposal to make it look as such. This however needs to look like it existed in a more physical nature, so that's noted. Next up is the more stubby look. The proportions are very bots-like and short. This was another tough thing to really get down because in anime these days everything is so sleek and clean so I really had to take some steps back and allow myself to refigure out anatomy but only how this style sees it. Basically forgetting all I know to really dive into this established look. As mentioned before, it's very sharp and 90s looking and compare this to any other anime-esque thing at the time and you'll definitely see some similarities in style. The faces can be these weird shapes and the expressions are also built up using very sharp lines and angles, so it's just not something I'm used to, which made it all the more fun doing it. I don't know, something about taking a step back and drawing in an absolutely different way, ways that you would never tackle an image personally, is kind of freeing. Anyway, to finish off this assessment, let's take a look back to the line art. Again, it's clearly drawn with a pen on a piece of paper with a lot of tooth on it, which is basically the grip of the paper, which gives it this kind of gritty look, something you can really only notice if you're looking extremely close. But if not replicated, it can definitely throw off the entire look of the piece. So, with all this in mind, I take this to the test and just begin drawing and drawing and redrawing and trying a little bit and drawing until I get somewhere, at least something better than what the first day brought. I redo the drawing from the first day, only changing a few things just to compare, and yeah, I mean, it's getting a little bit closer, but still, there are a couple of things that need to be fixed. However, we have a bigger style crisis in mind here, and that's the current Sugimori style. Let's get this out of the way right now. This does not look like a Ken Sugimori drawing, even less so than my older style drawings. So what was wrong and what can I do to fix it? Well, let's tackle my obvious shortcomings first. First off is that line art. Remember that tooth fact that I mentioned before? Sugimori's drawings have always had that more edgy feel to his art, my lines, however, are way too clean. My lines are also far too thick. Remember, this is more of an anime style, and while Sugimori does allow for line thickness to show, the lines aren't all that cartoony, whereas mine kind of are. The coloring is another weak spot of this piece, obviously. It doesn't really look like watercolor at all. Yes, the newer Pokemon art is done digitally, of course, but the brushes used make it look like they can be done traditionally. Herein lies the problem. My biggest problem, however, and the one that I need to tackle with the utmost certainty is the face. This is not a Pokemon styled face. Does it look okay? Sure, possibly, but nothing like what Pokemon has really ever made. And again, we're not striving for fan art pieces. I want to get as close to official art as I can. So what can I do to fix it? Easy, study the style a bit more in terms of proportion and face structure, and just as importantly, I need to find brushes that I can use to capture that more hand-drawn feel. Luckily, that step will help with both styles, but before I tackle that, I decided to break down Sugimori's newer style. So let's talk about that real quick. The new style is a lot longer, a lot more slender. This style proportionally is the exact opposite of his older style. It's literally day and night. The characters are taller and have slender features, and I need to be able to match that. Luckily, this comes a little more easy to me. Lastly is the painterly feel I have continued to mention throughout this episode. While it is digital, it still feels like it's possible to do on paper. If I could nail that, then I am definitely in. After tons of searching, I found an incredible video by this YouTube channel that goes by subjectively, where one of the members is really good at recreating Pokemon art. I was interested because if I could find what brushes he uses, I can speed this process up exponentially. Luckily, in one of his videos, one where he actually redraws Palkia but does his own take on its primal form, he mentions in the comment what brushes he uses. Even more luckily for me, he uses Procreate, which is actually the app I use as well. So the brushes he uses are already pre-installed. First was the Jasinski, I think that's what it is, I really don't know, this isn't even like a bit thing. Uh, but the Jasinski inking pen, which gave that exact feel I was looking for. And then for the shading and highlights, he used a medium hard brush, which is kind of like a paintbrush, but I can't really explain it. I just, if you have Procreate, I highly recommend you playing around with these two. 
uh, it does give a great look to the image. Once I tested these out, it made a huge difference. I had found exactly what I was looking for. Redrew my first day's drawings using the new brushes and the change was amazing. I didn't even do anything structurally different. I just redrew using these new brushes and it was already looking so much better. The face was still off, so I did some quick studies and recreated it multiple times until I had a better understanding. With the day coming to an end, I quickly wrote down everything I learned and prepared for the last day. What's up guys? So day two is just about done. Um, today was a lot better, so I was able to find out what brushes I'm going to be using for the final day, um, and that's all thanks to Subjectively, which is a YouTube channel I highly recommend you guys checking out, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, other than that, I kind of just worked on the proportions of everything, making it a little bit more in the style of Ken Sugimori, if that made sense. Um, so yeah, and I got the poses ready for day three and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, just so that tomorrow I can just tackle the line art and the rendering. Um, so yeah, pretty much at the best I can do. Um, again, I'm only giving myself three days. I wish I gave myself more time, but then it wouldn't really be entertainment. So had to have something a race against the clock, if you will. I hope it comes together. So yeah. With the final day, I got my sketches ready and the battle began. Here is my final process. I really hope you all enjoy and let's see how close I came.
Well, 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 I can honestly say that I'm super proud with how these came out. I will say, however, I do wish I had a bit more time to nail a few more aspects, but in a three day span, I think this is a huge improvement. These side by sides genuinely amaze me. In the end, I was able to do a few fun techniques that really put everything together quite nicely. One thing I actually did on the older style, just in case you didn't catch it, was I actually got a PNG of a piece of paper set it to multiply so I can rest it on top of the image, and after lowering the opacity a bit, it really gave a nice look to the piece. The second drawing really just benefited from the brush changes and the updated face and proportions. No tricks here really, just a better understanding of the style. Anyway, that's the first episode of Master Study. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey. I'd also like to really throw a thanks out to Subjectively and Magic Jack Art in particular for the brush mentions in his comments. I really couldn't have done it without seeing that info. So please check them out, show them some love. That channel is awesome. And if you love art stuff, you're really gonna like it there. Most importantly though, thank you Ken Sugimori and Game Freak and the Pokemon company in general for creating a style and a world that has shaped and inspired me in ways you cannot possibly imagine. I owe almost everything to this series artistically. I thought it was pretty fun and I hope you guys felt the same. If you guys did like it, please make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you know when we're posting because we're doing that now. And again, I just wanna thank you all so much. This video and this series in general is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. So it's super cool to actually watch it turn into something. Um, and I do hope, because obviously I'm recording this before it goes up, I do hope you guys feel the same. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, love you all, and peace.